Hey, hello everyone, and thanks for joining us for Access City Council. I'm your host, City of Las Vegas Communications Director, David Riggleman. Coming up on this show, a beautiful tribute to celebrate the life of NHP Trooper Micah May, who died in the line of duty. And we'll tell you about heroes of a different kind who saved a neighborhood from some big problems. Here to talk about these topics and a whole lot more is our Mayor Pro Tem, Stavros Anthony, who is also the Councilman for Ward 4. Councilman, Mayor Pro Tem, welcome back to the show. It has been a long, long hiatus. It has, and uh, we, I had some things going on. You and did. I wasn't allowed to come on Access right. City Council, but those are over with, and uh, it's uh, just glad to be back talking about some of the great things happening in the city of Las Vegas and uh, in Ward 4 and, and talking to you about them and uh, whoever's watching on the general public. Yeah, so, we, yeah, it's been so long since you've been on the show. Yeah, so we have a lot to talk about. We have a rule uh, here at the city that if you're running for office, you can't be featured on this program. And so Mayor Pro Tem, of course, was running for office. And uh, the process took longer than it normally does. Uh, but nonetheless, it's all done now and so welcome back to the show it's all, we've it's, missed you we've missed you around it's all here. good and I, I i love being on the las vegas city council and represent ward four and everything always works out uh the, the way it should be so i'm, I'm very you've always thankful said that. To, yeah. to, to be where i'm at yeah you've yeah. always said that well i think a lot of people know that you are a former a police officer retired from metro as a captain after 29 years so i know police work is always very near and dear to you and you had posted this on Facebook, a uh, tragic story. You said, may his memory be eternal. Thank you for your service, Trooper Micah May. And of course, you're referring to Micah May, who died in the line of duty. This is the procession, the funeral procession that took place um, on August 7th. But um, he was trying to stop a person who had carjacked a vehicle, trying to put down those stop sticks and was struck and uh and then was killed that that uh, that morning yeah it's it is such a tragedy when we have a, a a law enforcement officer whether it's on a federal state or local level uh uh who's killed in the line of duty and and uh you know we we commemorate um every single officer that goes out there every single day and puts on the uniform and and knows that they can be in harm's way but uh the, the the thing that we all hate is when one of our officers gives up their lives and uh that's why we have Police Memorial Park, mm -hmm. uh, right. so we can make sure that their memory is eternal. And uh, unfortunately, we'll be um, uh, adding Officer May to, to uh, one of the rocks at Police Memorial Park, and we'll remember him. And our ha hearts go out to the fa his family, his wife, and his uh, and their kids. And but you know what, what's really what's really unbelievable is the community support yeah. that comes out that shows up when one of our officers dies in a line of duty and to see see the general public come out and and uh remember officer may and uh, remember his name and and uh, let the family know that we're not going to forget uh it, it this is what makes this community uh so absolutely awesome it's uh very much pro law enforcement um uh the, the people in this community uh, understand the sacrifice that law enforcement officers um uh, give every single day when they put on that uniform and uh, we're just thankful that uh, uh, the, the public recognizes that and we're thankful that we have people that want to do that, that, uh, that want to go out and serve this community and keep strangers safe and, and uh, um, you know, provide a public service uh, to, to the community knowing that they could die in the line of duty. Yeah. And uh, we're always going to remember Officer May uh, because what, what he did, what he did that day was, was trying to keep this community safe and he gave up his life for it. And uh, we're going to continue to remember that. So when we have our law enforcement memorial, which will be uh, coming up here soon, um, we're going to remember him as well as the other over 100 officers that have died in the line of duty here. So, uh, um, you know, just remember May and your uh, and your thoughts and prayers, and uh, remember his, his wife and his and uh, his children. And um, yeah. yeah, it's tough. It's very tough. We're going to talk more about uh, the memorial a little bit later in this program. But uh, Councilman uh, Mayor Pro Tem, speaking of the community helping others in need, you posted this on Facebook. You said, recognizing Project 150 today, a great group that helps homeless and disadvantaged teenagers. 
in Las Vegas. And what you're looking at is one of their public service announcements here, but you, you recognize the group as one of our uh, ceremonial items uh, during our city council meeting back on July 7th. Yeah, it's, uh, I, I don't think the public understands how many uh, homeless teenagers we have out in our community. The, the, these, are, these are kids that are trying to survive and trying to go to school and yeah. trying to get an education and uh, they need all the help they can get. And uh, it, was, it was a couple of individuals, um, uh, Patrick Sprager uh, and Don Perdue that uh, 10 years ago they uh, put together Project 150 when they realized uh, how many uh, how many homeless teenagers we have out there, and I was honored to recognize them at our city council meeting. There they are, uh, one of the founders and his executive staff, and uh, they have uh, since they started this, they initially found about 150 uh, homeless youth when this began, and now they've uh, assisted 6,519 wow. since then. So. There's a, uh, there's a need uh, for, for all of us to come together and, and help these kids that are just found themselves in a terrible situation right. and Project 150 has taken the lead there. So we, we need to recognize them and help Project 150 uh, do what they want to do and that's help these kids get yeah. back on their feet. I, I think Councilman uh, Mayor Pro Tem, the, the thing that was just so staggering is just the numbers you talk about, the numbers of homeless teens here in, in Las Vegas is it's uh, it's unimaginable. I had no idea we had that. Many. Yeah, uh, I, and that's one of the reasons why I wanted to uh, recognize them at a city council yeah. meeting, so pe uh, people understand that it, it is uh, it, it is an issue here, and especially when it's a kid, when it's a, a teenager or, or uh, one of our young adults that all of a sudden, for whatever reason, becomes uh, homeless in a terrible situation, and uh, you know we need to we need to reach out to them. So. Uh, uh, look up Project 150 and see if you can get involved and help them out because uh, they're doing some great things in our community. Yep. And uh, it was just great to recognize them and uh, let the public know yep. uh, how you can help out Project 150. Yeah. Well, Mayor Pro Tem, speaking of recognizing people doing great work, uh, you also took time to recognize our city's, uh, one of our city teams, we call it our values team. This is a team that's done outstanding work. You nominated this group that we're looking at right now. They're from our operations and maintenance pro, uh, department, uh, and they perform a very valuable service. Could have been a big disaster had they not acted as quickly as they did. We get a lot of people in the community that call my office and say, mm -hmm. hey, we have a problem here. Can you help us out? Most of the time, they just call the city of Las Vegas, and we have such great employees that they jump on anything that's going out uh, that's, that's a problem in our community that they can assist right. with. And uh, in this particular case, some knucklehead pool company <laughs> <laughs> decided to dump a bunch of their plaster down one of our sewer areas oh. and uh, clogged it up. And luckily, somebody at Desert Shores uh, who, who uh, noticed it called... Uh, our operations and maintenance folks and said, hey, this is a problem. They were out there the, the, that day and they spent two days um, uh, fixing it. Yeah. And it, it was a lot of work. Yeah, to, getting the it, plaster out oh, of a yeah. sewer line. If that hadn't been cleared, you can imagine what would have happened. There had been a big blockage there and things would have backed up. It had been yeah. a, a mess. So I decided to recognize them as the values team at the city of Las Vegas and they won and congratulations to all of them. And it's uh, Jacques Rice, who's the street and sanitation supervisor, and his crew, Bill uh, Fenderson, uh, Haley Taylor, James Harris, Mark Hooper, uh, Melvin Segovia, Christopher Davey, and uh, Denise Ellis. And uh, congratulations to all of them. And if I could just read uh, uh, what the, uh, th this came from Gail Amster, who, who uh, lives in, in uh, Desert Shores. Uh, my name is Gil Amster, and I'm a board member on the Ritz Cove Desert Shores HOA. Over the weekend, we had an awful problem with a sewage spill from the manhole in our neighborhood. I finally reached someone on Monday morning and explained the emergency. A gentleman by the name of Jacques Rice came to assess the situation. Almost immediately thereafter, a crew came out and spent the whole of Monday and Tuesday clearing the line. I'm so impressed with the crew that worked this issue. They were polite patient and just all around really nice people. I mean, I think that's the best part. Please extend my appreciation to them. Once again, many thanks to such a great crew. So and th this is uh, this this is a public and uh, 
Um, this is just another example of the great employees that we have yeah. at the city of Las Vegas. Well, and then you took it the next step. Uh, you made sure that they were recognized yep. for the work that they did. You know, yep. so we, we recognize our, our values team. It's a team that's performed uh, outstanding work, and so they got uh, they got some kudos for and much deserved yeah. for the work that they and did. And we went out yeah. to the operations and maintenance building. You were there. Yeah, it was somebody fun. brought donuts yeah. and bagels. And it was nice a, meeting those guys. It was, yeah, yeah, it was. It was uh, some great people. So yeah. yeah. Well, congratulations to them. Keep up the good work, guys. You, you did us all proud out there. And uh, Mayor Pro Tem, I think a lot of people are aware of the fact that there's a there's a vacant parcel across the street from City Hall, across Clark Street, and we're trying to figure out what to put there. The council has made a big step forward. Uh, we put the job out to bid and selected uh, LGA Architects to build the next. It's kind of an extension of City Hall across the street. Yeah, th this is really a big deal for downtown Las Vegas because we're, we're trying to build this nucleus uh, in downtown where everything just thrives off of mm -hmm. that. And we have our city hall, we have our municipal court right. building, and as you mentioned, there's a, uh, an empty piece of property. And these are the renderings that came from uh, L LGA. We had actually three architecture companies. Mm -hmm. They all did a great job, but it was a unanimous decision to go with LGA architecture. And uh, this is their initial concept. Mm -hmm. Uh, but this uh, this may change to a certain degree. So uh, there's going to be a lot of input from the city council, from the mayor, uh, uh, anybody at City Hall, mm, right. because a lot of the folks that are going to use this are uh, people that work out of City Hall. But this is really for the general public. Right. So we want the, the public to call us and say, hey, we'd like to see this there. Uh, we plan on spending time downtown, and I, we think this would be a mm -hmm. Part of the, should be part of the plaza, and we'll give all that to LG Architecture, and um, uh, we're, we're, we really want to come up with something that is going to attract people downtown. Mm -hmm. Want people to come down, and uh, and spend some time in in our particular neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And because of that, I think uh, once that happens, we're going to get even more exposure and more businesses right. and more people coming downtown to live. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, this is going to be a big deal for um, for the city of Las yeah. Vegas. If you look at a lot of cities all across the country, their downtowns are just dying because they've neglected them. And that's something that we do not want to right. happen here. And this is just another step in making sure we have a great downtown. You know, and the I think you saw in the concept there, it's a combination of office space but also open space. And that was the idea is to make it a place, as, as Mayor Pro Tem is saying, that would attract people, a place where you could come and walk, maybe uh, sit outside on a nice day, have your lunch, but also do business there. There'll be office space and, and city offices located there as well. And so. I, I think we're, what we're looking at is having some events at night. Uh, yeah. Maybe yeah. some concerts, having some uh, uh, kids events downtown, a, mo a movie, mm -hmm. a movie in a park type of situation uh, where people come downtown and they feel good, they feel safe, they feel like they're part of this community. So. Uh, uh, this is we're going to take our time on this. This is not going to happen tomorrow. <laughs> no, this is probably no. a couple of years down the yeah. road. So um, uh, keep an eye on it. But we would definitely like your input if you have something that you would like to contribute to this project. Yeah, that's right. Very true. And would uh, definitely love to hear from you. Speaking of City Hall, a tradition at City Hall is uh, one I love every summer. You posted this on Facebook. You said, don't forget to attend the collector car show at City Hall Wednesday morning from 7 to 10.30, and you've been doing this for a number of years. These car collectors folks bring these these just great classic vehicles down to City Hall. It's always on a City Council Day. We have a little ceremony inside and out, but what's really nice is that the public gets to see these these just amazing vehicles. Well, uh, first of all, you start with the, the, the group of people that you just saw out there. I mean, they are so proud of their vehicles. They <laughs> yeah. spend a lot of time yes. and a lot of money to make sure that these are in mint condition because it's it, this is really part of our history, part sure of our is. culture. The whole car industry is yeah. part of what we grew up. You talked about yeah, your, uh, my parents. It wasn't a convertible. We yeah. had a Corvair like that well, back in the day. Yeah, everybody remembers these cars, <laughs> yeah. and and I want to thank them for uh, driving them down to City Hall and sharing these vehicles with the general public. And we have people come out and just say, "Hey, my dad had this, or uh -huh, my grandfather right. had this," and. Uh, I've never seen a car look this good. That's in the, from the 1950s, you know, yeah. <laughs> and uh, it, we had them, I believe, from the 1930s all the way yeah. up to uh, yeah. all the way up to the modern era. So uh, just, it's. I just want to thank them for bringing them out. And and there was almost a possibility of rain 
I know. That morning and Which all you bad. always worry you know, about yeah, rain yeah. getting on You don't want to get us anything in it, no water on the it's just you know we just wash this. Yeah. It's interesting. Uh, we've been doing this a number of years. You've been bringing these folks here and the cars are different every year. It's yep. always a new crop of them every time and it's just amazing that there are that many classic cars that are all around Las Vegas. So. It's actually a, a billion dollar industry mm -hmm. all over the all over the country and uh, we, we have a, a major SEMA convention mm -hmm. that's out here that deals with these uh, classic cars so uh, um, it's 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 a it's a huge thing all over the country but just thanks to the folks that live here that spend time and money on these cars and, and let us enjoy them. Yeah it's it's yeah. like uh, really going back in time if you grew up with any of those cars, you get in it, you see it again, it's like, wow, this brings back memories all the way around. So, and again, uh, saw a Thunderbird, an old Thunderbird there, and didn't, we didn't have a Thunderbird, we did have a Corvair though. So, it was America's version of Volkswagen. It was a rear engine car made by Chevrolet. Yeah. And um, and I, I just want to recognize Skeeter. He's yeah, one, yeah. He's yeah, the one who he's, helps me put this together he every does. year. So, uh, Great guy. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Skeeter. We'll see you next year, next July. <laughs> Have you come back out again. Um, and then, uh, Councilman, Mayor Pro Tem, you had a National Night Out. National Night Out is always the first Tuesday in August. Of course, we also do it the first Tuesday in October here right. in Nevada because it's pretty hot in August here. Nonetheless, you were out at Desert Shores. It's a tradition, another tradition. You've been doing this every year since you've been in office. It's uh, what a great place to have a national night out. I mean, it, there's, it's in Desert Shores. There's a lagoon. Um, the people that, that, uh, that come out to this are just really nice people. Uh, Metro shows up. Uh, this is really about making sure that our community um, uh, partners up with uh, our law enforcement agencies. But you know, you, you have a lagoon to go uh, swimming in. Uh, we we have a few speeches, but we try to keep that as yeah, short as just possible because yeah, everybody wants to have a nice time. Yeah. But it's uh, there. There's our Department of Public Safety marshals and corrections officers. We're out there in animal control and uh, really gives a chance for for the public to to go up to an officer in uniform and say, "Hey, uh, thank you for your service," or "I'm having a problem mm -hmm. in my neighborhood, right. and can you help me out?" and uh, this one is in Desert Shores, but in October we have a lot more all over the yeah, valley. It's and, a little cooler, yeah. yeah and I, I believe Desert Shores is eventually going to move theirs to October also because yeah. it was very hot that yes, night. Yes, <laughs> August in difficult. Las Vegas, even at that hour, yeah. is going to be pretty warm. National Night Out started as National Leave the Light On. Uh, you're, you're supposed to turn on your front porch light to kind of tell the bad guys in the neighborhood, hey, we're all looking out for each other. And that morphed to national night out which is like you said councilman yeah. it's an opportunity for the public to get to know the public safety people their law enforcement fire uh, even animal control as, as you mentioned to get to know the people who are going to be patrolling their their neighborhoods yeah. and and not only that but to, to get to meet your neighbors yeah yeah uh, yeah a lot Good of times point. we don't even know who the person is that lives next door to us because mm -hmm. we have this tendency when it's so hot outside that you just want to drive into your garage and shut your garage door <laughs> yeah. and go in the house. Understandable so sometimes. We, we, want, we want people in the neighborhood. Anybody can have a national night out, so I'd encourage you to, to uh, put something together. Mm -hmm. If you need any help from my office, we'd be glad to help you out. But it's really a chance to meet your, your neighbors. If you, have a, if you live in an HOA, you can meet your HOA board members. Um, it's, it's just a, it's a way for people to connect because with the more we talk, the more we understand what the problems are the more we can solve those problems. Yeah. And that's whether we solve them ourselves or we need Metro or we need a city of Las Vegas to help out. And uh, I try to go at as many of these as I can, but Desert Shores having a lagoon is a good attraction. Yeah, exactly. It's always a nice, a nice tradition out there. And then Councilman, uh, kids are back to school. It's hard to believe, but uh, there was a Ward 4 backpack delivery took place. Uh, this took place on August 13th, right for the kids. Um, you know, needed those backpacks and uh, had a nice delivery to, uh, I think it was Myron Levitt uh, Middle School, if I'm not mistaken. Well, right? actually, we uh, uh, we delivered uh, backpacks to all the schools in Ward ah, 4. So we had that, about ah, very uh, nice. 300 backpacks. Wow. Uh, we have Myron Levitt there, but we delivered about 50 backpacks to, uh, that's Sally and Becky, my assistants, and uh, they helped me out. And, uh, you know, that's one essential thing that every kid has you to have, have is that. a backpack. Yeah. And unfortunately, there are kids that show up for school where for some reason they just don't have one or right. they can't afford it. 
And uh, uh, every year for really the last 12 years, uh, I've delivered about 50 to 60 extra backpacks to all the schools in my ward. And uh, the principals are just very thankful that they have something to hand out to a kid that shows up that doesn't have a backpack. And not only the backpack, but we have- uh, Filled with stuff, yeah. We have all kinds of school mm -hmm. supplies yeah. that are in there. So um, um, it's just, I, I love doing it because it get, gives me a chance to talk to the principals and the staff. And they're the ones that actually hand out the backpacks to the kids um, because they're the ones that know which ones need a backpack. And how many schools are in your ward? There's uh, between uh, uh, elementary schools and middle schools, there's uh, 12. Wow. And then I have a few charter schools also. Wow, that's awesome. So, that's yeah. great. That's a lot of backpacks. Well, yeah, good, good a, for you. It's a little good bit of work. It takes about a half a day to deliver them all, but it's all, it's all fun. Good, good. Yeah. And give the kids off to a good start this school year, which is underway. And then uh, to help, you know, ease that that sting of having to go back to the classroom for some, you had your Ward 4 back to school pool party that took place uh, here on uh, August 13th just for school. Actually, school had, I guess, for some had already started, but this was a way to get some school supplies and, you know, to kind of take the sting out of coming back to school <laughs> for those that were dreading it. Yes, sometimes we have our back to school party before school starts. Mm -hmm. uh, for some reason, this one happened uh, the I Friday. Think, I think after it's because it it's because they, they started a little early because yeah. of COVID. Yeah. So yeah. I, I think it was uh, in, in this particular case, it was all right. You had your first week of school. Why don't you come out and go swimming in a pool and take it easy? Yeah. And we have some extra supplies for you. We also handed out some backpacks and. Uh, we had some great kids come out with their families, and everybody had just a wonderful time. It was a little dicey with the weather. With that, the weather, yeah, yeah. Uh, we were the keeping, an eye, yeah, 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 keeping yeah. an eye on the rain, but yeah. it never rained, and uh, everybody had a great time. And if you needed a backpack, we had one. School supplies, and we had NV Energy out there, yeah. and yeah. Uh, some other vendors that were out just in case anybody had any questions. And um, it was a lot of fun. It was it worked yeah. out good because yeah, there was a big lightning show. There was. But long after the party uh, there was over, of course the lightning would have meant everybody out of the right. pool. <laughs> but uh, luckily we got to have the party in before the lightning came. So and, and the Y does a great job they with do. their lifeguards. Uh, they had some kids out there keeping an eye on things for us. We had a DJ. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, it's a, it's a good party yeah. every year. And you know, like I say, I think because of COVID, that's why school started before the back to school party. Uh, just that was just an anomaly this year. Councilman, uh, something near and dear. We talked about Police Memorial Park. We talked about Trooper Micah May, who died in the line of duty. Coming up on September 11th, of course, that's a significant date. We're going to have a commemoration out of the park again to remember those who've died in the line of duty and those that we lost, of course, on September 11th in New York City. But also, Councilman, uh, we're going to be planting uh, one of the survivor tree saplings uh, at that ceremony as well. Yeah, you know, we, we have such a great contingent of retired NYPD officers that live in Las Vegas, and uh, they put this event on with me at Police Memorial Park, and it's... Uh, it's really twofold. It's just to remember September 11th. Uh, that's something we can never forget. Uh, thousands of people died uh, that day, including uh, uh, police officers, transit officers, firefighters. So we remember them. We remember the, all the officers in Southern Nevada that had died in line of duty. We'll remember Officer May. And uh, it's, it's, uh, it's just a, a great way for people to get together and recognize law enforcement mm -hmm. and what they do every single day. And uh, I love these guys from NYPD. They yeah. are just so dedicated to their profession and they're dedicated to make sure that um, officers that have died in the line of duty are remembered. Yeah. So come on out. It's uh, as you saw in there it was September 11th, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Saturday at Police Memorial Park. Yeah. Uh, the survivor tree I mentioned too, uh, Mayor Pro Tem, uh, in New York City on September 11th, 2001, uh, a tree survived with all this rubble and debris on top of it. As they were cleaning it up, they found that the tree had, had lived. So in 2017, 2016, there was a program started where the saplings from that tree would be distributed to communities around the country who, that suffered trauma and loss. And uh, Las Vegas, of course, we had our October 1 event that took place in 2017. So we got two of the trees and one is going to be at Fire Station 5. Uh, there's a commemoration there for September 11th in front of the station. And then there'll also be one of the trees we planted out of Police Memorial Park as well. So, great. Uh, great way to explain it, yeah. David. Thanks. 
And then last but not least, everybody, we've got a movie in the park coming up in September, September 17th. These are always so much fun because they're free. <laughs> and it's, yeah, it's at uh, the Durango Hills uh, YMCA again at Durango and, and uh, Gowan. It's right next door to the, the community center. Um, come on out. You're right. Everything's free. The movie's <laughs> free. The popcorn's free. We'll have water. We'll have, uh, we'll have some... Uh, uh, some games at the beginning to wear your kids out, so when the movie starts, they'll be nice and tired, and, uh, <laughs> and sit. <laughs> you can put you can put your blanket down. You can bring your uh, fried chicken or pizza or whatever you want to bring to eat. Or we'll have some food trucks out yeah. there if you want to purchase something. And uh, um, I've heard the the movie's great, Ray of the Last Dragon, and. Uh, even if you don't have kids, uh, adults can come out too and have a great time themselves. Yeah, so, yeah. We, we, we were both saying before the show we hadn't seen this movie, so it's an opportunity to, to, to catch it. At this so point. I'll see you out there then. Yeah, you know, I'll tell you, September 17th, <laughs> yeah, you know what, free movie is a good thing. It you know? is. <laughs> so, well, Amir Pratim, we're about out of time here, but we want to tell everybody out there, hey, we always want to hear from you. So if there's something you'd like to share with Mayor Pro Tim Anthony, you can find him on Facebook and Twitter. He posts a lot. You can also contact the councilman just by picking up the phone, 702-229-6405, or you can send him an email. His address is santhony at lasvegasnevada.gov, and he or one of his great staff will get right back to you with whatever your issue might be. And even if you're not sure if it's a city issue or a county issue, contact his office, they'll get you in the right direction. They'll, they'll make sure you find the right people you need to talk to. So, well, great to have you back. It's been way too long. It's, so. uh, it's, we're rocking and rolling as usual. <laughs> yeah. We got a lot of things coming up. We do. A lot of stuff to talk about and we'll Good. see you at the next one. It's like riding a bike for you. Yeah. You know, you didn't miss a beat, even being gone this, uh, all this time. But good to have you back. Thanks. And we'll have you back in six weeks with another update from Ward 4. And in the meantime, uh, don't miss our next show beginning on August 26th with Ward 2 City Councilwoman Victoria Seaman. You can now catch all of our KCLV shows on Apple TV, Roku, and Amazon Fire. And don't forget, you can watch us live on the Internet at KCLV.TV. Thanks for watching, everyone. We'll see you next time around.